Hey guys, Jordi here for Cinecam.net and welcome back to Copycat Friday. Kendrick Lamar finally released a brand new music video, The Heart Part 5. It is here, it is awesome, and it has deep fakes. Deep faking is a technique where you throw your face together with someone else's face through an AI software and it's going to combine them together, basically giving you a new face. Well, in this tutorial video, we're going to show you guys all of the ins and outs of how you can create your own deep fake as well and make your own Kendrick Lamar music video. Now, we actually I actually worked together with a professional on deepfakes in this video and he shared us a ton of secrets and insights of how to get the perfect deepfake. We can't tell you guys just yet who we work together with. Maybe in the future we can update the description of this video. Until then, thank you so much unknown person for all of the help and without further ado now, let's jump into the video. <laughs> And we're done with this set. And if you're wondering how we're using Charlie Putt's music here on YouTube, well, then go check out Licked, where you can download popular songs and use them on YouTube. All right, guys, light setup. It's super easy. We don't have a red background, so we're simply bouncing a red light onto a black background, which is giving us that deep red color. Then above me, we got the Aperture 600X Pro, which is a bicolor light, but we're using it as a daylight. It's coming from above, so we're getting deep shadows underneath my eyes. We're lifting it up with the P60C, also from Aperture. It's set to daylight, kind of acting like a bounce board, but we're just using a light for that. You can also do it. Just make sure that it's super soft because you don't want to notice that there's a light coming from underneath. And that's it, three Aperture lights, the best lights in the business, guys. We have our light set up, now some tips how to shoot. Jordi is going to be our main subject where we are going to place our faces to, so Jordi can just act and do whatever he wants. But for us, there's gonna be something special because we need to be deep faked onto Jordi's face. So the first thing for us is going to be a very long clip where we shoot ourselves in different angles and do a lot of mouth expressions. We saw on Corridor's video where they also explain deep fake that they use a couple of phrases to to get the most of the facial mimics. So that is exactly what Lorenzo and I did. Something else which makes a deepfake a lot easier, we were standing in the same light Jordi was, so our deepfake will match much better. That's a tip you can do, but it's not always possible if you're using like a celebrity face or whatever. And the last thing you need to know is that it's very important when you're shooting yourself is that your face is completely open. No hair in front, completely open, because we're gonna need everything of your face. So sit there and paste a smile on your face and have some fun. So for the deep fake, we don't want to obstruct the face in any way. And since you can see my hair is pretty long and goes all in my face, I need to get it away. So, Bobby pins it is. Hi, I'm MC Jordy. I'm gonna rap today. I'm not gonna rap because I can't do that. What I am gonna do is morph into you. Yo, yo, I shouldn't rap because I can't do that. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. It's true. I can't rap. Ah, that's a fact. And you know what else is a fact? Well, you need a Storyblock subscription. That's a fact. I can recommend this to any creative, any filmmaker, any VFX artist, any editor, everyone. And here is why. No, it's not because they sponsor us. I mean, they are sponsoring us. And thank you so much for that, Storyblocks. But we genuinely love Storyblocks so much. We use it on a daily basis. And that's why I can highly recommend it to anyone. It's an ever-growing library with more than a million royalty-free, high-quality stock assets. You can find numerous assets perfect to give your visual effects that something special, like for example, lens flares, muzzle flashes, hologram huts, green screen shots, and so much more. Now, besides that, you can find old stock assets in HD to 4K resolutions, various After Effects templates, which will save you a ton of time, epic music and sound effects for your videos, and so much more. Like I've already said, Storyblocks is a filmmaker's best friend and will help you to create more and better videos. They really help us to tell our story in the best possible way and bring it to life. And imagine that you can combine all the stock footage that you want with a deepfake technique. This will give you endless of possibilities. <laughs> 
but of course you can also use it for normal visual effects like our anime inspired Attack on Titans transformation. We used a ton of smoke, energy, fire, lens flares, stock clips and so much more and we all got these from story blocks, combined them together to create this super awesome visual effects. And to top that off you can download as many assets as you want from their library with the unlimited all access plan. But don't worry they have multiple plans to fit everyone's needs. If you want to know more about story blocks and how to start downloading right away then click the first link in the description down below or just go straight to storyblocks.com forward slash scenicon. All right now let's go back to the studio and start rapping. I can't do that. I shouldn't rap because I can't do that. Story to the blocks, this sponsor rocks! Now, today we'll show you guys a new software called Machine Video Editor to use next to Deepface Lab. It is going to help us create better results with less work than if you would do it without it. So, make sure you have the latest version of Deepface Lab downloaded and installed. You should see a new folder once it's extracted. In this folder, you can see different batch files numbered from 1 to 10, but don't worry, we don't need to use all of them. The very first step is to run Clear Workspace. You don't need to do this if it's your first time using Deepface Lab, but for every other deepfake you make, you need to clean out all the previous data. Next up, head into the workspace folder. You will see two movie files in this folder, but don't worry, just delete them and we'll replace them. In here, add the clip where the face will be pasted onto one. This will call data underscore DST. Let's also add the clip of the talent which you want to copy the face off. This clip will call data underscore SRC. The next step is to extract our images from the source. So double click this batch file number two. For FPS, you can choose something like seven. We don't need every single frame from our video since that will be too much data for the AI to handle, making it way slower without having a significant better result. Then just press enter until it closes itself. If we head into our workspace folder and go to data source, you can see our extracted images as PNGs. A good rule of thumb for a proper data source set is to have around 5000 images. Next up we need to extract the faces from every PNG we have. Double click on for face set extract. Here you can just press enter until it starts running. And once it's done we can find all the extracted faces in workspace, data source, source align folder. Important is to go through these pictures and look for images that can't be used, like blurred faces, upside down faces, things that are in the face, etc. Just make sure that every face is visible in every picture. Okay, now it's time to extract the faces of our destination data. In our last deepfake tutorial, we extracted the faces in Deepface Lab, just like we did with the source. However, this time we'll be using a different software called Machine Video Editor. This software is used for deepfake project management, from data gathering to compiling Positing. And we will be using it mainly for extracting our face and creating advanced masks called XX. The first step is of course downloading Machine Video Editor. We will leave a link in the description for that. Next we will extract it and open up the software. When opening up for the first time, we'll get a pop-up where they ask to install dependencies. We can just do that. However, if you get an error that your file directory contains spaces in their name, remove the spaces and fix the error. Now one more step before we can start using the software, go to the settings on top and for for the DFL build folder, we'll be choosing the Deepface Lab folder. Now when everything is done, we go to File, Open Project Directory, go to our Deepface Lab folder and select this folder. We can now see all the folders on our left side. And in the Workspace tab, we can find our destination MP4 clip that we are going to use to extract our faces. Select the clip and go to the Video button on the right top side. Then we are going to extract the frames. Choose the frame rate, the image extension, we use the PNG file format and for the extract pads, we'll be using the data destination folder or the data underscore DST folder. Then we hit the extract button, wait and hit the save button on top. Now go to the data destination tab and select open images option. Go to the second tab on the right side, which is the detections tab. With this tab, we are going to detect every face. Now for some settings. The detection tool will be of course DFL, which is deep face lab. The face output directory will be our alignment map in the data destination destination folder. Under the directory option we'll select the whole face option and last enable our GPU. So it will use that to do the calculations. Now just wait until the whole process is done and again save the window on top. Like we can see now our faces are detected and tracked. But what if we have mistakes in the tracking? We can't adjust them on the extracted faces. For this we need to bring the faces back to our original frame 
database. So go to the data destination tab and under the detection management, set the type to video frame. Now save this window tab. Then go back to the align faces tab and again go to the detection management tab. Here set the type to face. The parent frame folder is going to be the folder where our extracted video is stored. So this will be the data destination folder. Next, enable the set faces to parent frames option and hit import face data. Once done, save the align faces window tab and go to the original data destination window. Normally we'll now have our tracked faces on our original frames. If not, close the window and reopen it. They weren't loaded yet probably. Now we can check if our masks are correct and if not we can adjust them if needed. Just right click on the frame and choose edit alignments. Here we can adjust the landmarks. They can be a little bit off but if they are way off we can delete them and try to recalculate them by right clicking on them and choosing approximate faces from neighbors. It will now use the adjacent frames to create a new direct face. And once everything is in order we are ready to start making masks for the lips, mouth, eyebrows and the whole face. And for this we need to export our faces. Select every frame and go to the detection management tab. Here set the type to video frame. For the export folder we will create a new one for every mask we want. Starting with the eyes. We called it aligned underscore eyes. Next we enabled the use estimate face size button, set it to whole face and exported the faces to images. Now do this again for the mouth, eyebrows and the whole face. Creating 4 folders in total. Now go to the new folder, aligned eyes and let's start creating those eye masks. Right click on one of the pictures and choose edit alignments. In the top left corner we see a landmark slash segmentation button. Enable that so we can go to the segmentation window. Now enable the show segmentation button on the right, click on load model and now we can choose different segments to be visible like the eyes, the mouth and so on. Clicking on this can make everything a little bit slower. And oh yeah, if you want to see a mask of the whole face, you have to enable everything that sits within the face, like the nose, mouth, eyes, lips, skin and so on. Next we need to go through our entire image sequence by navigating the arrow keys. The goal is that we enable the eye mask on every different angle of the face. So not every frame has to have a mask, just every different angle. Once done we can close the segmentation window, which will apply the mask automatically and again save this window on top. Then we selected everything and again went to the detection management on the top right corner. Here we again set the type to faces, enable to set faces to parent frames. The faces folder needs to be the same as our current folder, so for us this will be the aligned eyes folder. And then we just hit the embed mask polygons. Of course do this process for every mask, so do it again for the mouth, eyebrows and the whole face. Now let's save it one more time and now we can close machine video editor. The next step is going to be checking if our math or X tags are correct. In our deepface lab folder we can find the batch file called 5.xx data destination mask edit. Before we run this we first have to set the correct folder for it to read. So right click and choose edit. Now on the input directory line we will change aligned to our aligned eyes folder. Meaning we can edit our eye masks. If we use the aligned mouth folder in the input directory we can obviously edit the mount mask. Now save the text document and let the batch file run. It will open up an exec editor, giving us the possibility to check our eye masks for a very last time. If needed, we can adjust the exec masks in this editor. And once you are happy with the results, let's train those masks. Go to the batch file called 5.exec train. Again, we need to edit the input directory for every mask. So right click, choose edit and adjust the input directory. Let's start with the aligned eyes folder. Save and run the batch file. In the command prompt, we choose our GPU. Now it will start the training. Let it train for 20 minutes or so and just hit enter to make it stop and save. And you're done! Lorenzo will now guide you through the next step of creating a deepfake. With this done all of the preparation is finished and we can start up the AI. Step 6 has different ways to train. There isn't a clear winner among these methods. It all depends. Deepfaking is a lot of trial and error. One of the differences is the need of computer resources. Mostly video memory. So we're going to work with SAE HD. Which gives great results. But do make sure your computer has some good hardware if you don't want to wait for weeks. Let's double click on train SAE HD. You'll get a ton of different settings to change but for most of them we'll just use the default ones, except a few. The first one is to enable auto backup. You can choose every x amount of hours you want to do this. A crash could happen while running this so a backup will make sure all your data is not lost. The next setting we'll change is the batch size. The larger the number the faster the learning will go. But of course your computer needs to be able to handle it. So play around with these values what works for your machine. 
machine. For face type, we'll go with whole face or WF. And the last setting we'll change is the enable gradient clipping. Here we pick yes. This will eliminate crashes and should guarantee us a more stable process. And that's it. Now we just have to wait for the AI to learn how your face looks and works and how it can match one face to another. And this could honestly take a while. You can see an iteration counter right here. Ideally you have around 150,000 iterations for a good result. The longer it goes the better the result will be. When you think it's been running long enough press enter to close it. And next up it's time to merge. Pick the same merge method as you use for the training method. So in our case we pick 7 merge SAEHD. And here is where you can choose if you want to do the final adjustments in Deepface Lab or to bring it over to After Effects to make the final adjustments in there. If you would want to make those adjustments in here, just press enter until it's asked for the interactive merger. Here we say yes and press enter until the UI pops up. We can use this UI to change things related to the mask and the skin colors in real time. Just go through them and use the tab to check which shortcuts do what. This is a preview of how your export will look. Once you're happy with the result, hit enter in the UI window to process the remaining frames and then enter again in the command prompt. Now, because we have our custom masks already, we're going to do the final adjustments in After Effects. So instead of saying yes to the interactive merger, we say no. Next up, it's going to ask us in which mode we want our footage. And here we pick raw RGB. This way we have full control over the colors. And this gets followed by a mask mode. And here we go for 7 XAG DST. And then just press enter until it's done. The last step is to convert everything to a movie file. You can choose whatever format you prefer for step 8. Once done, you can find your results in the workspace folder named Result and Result Mask. To get the other mask, you'll have to go back to XX Training, edit the file so it targets the whole face for example, run that file and once the training is done, merge SAEHD it. And again, merge it to an MP4 file or whatever format you prefer. Be aware that this merge will override previous files, so make copies. With all these files, we can now head into After Effects and start tweaking the deepfake. We simply stack all three talent layers and use the luma mats to cut out the faces of Janik and I. After this make cuts where each of the faces need to appear. To transition from one face to another, we can make use of a simple fade whenever Jordy's head makes a move. This way we can hide the transition in the motion blur, making it seamless. And the last step is to color match both skin tones, which you can do with the curves and or lumetri effect. And that's all there is to do, render it out and you have yourself a deep fake. I shouldn't rap cause I can't do that What I am gonna do is morph into you Now hit the like or take a hike Metaphysic, deepfake critic Thank the collab, I still can't rap Now thank you as well, subscribe and bell Story to the blocks, the sponsor rocks And I'll say it native, stay creative <laughs> I almost forgot to stay creative. All right, thank you so much guys for watching. Thank you to everyone involved. And uh, like or take a hike. Check out this video here, it's pretty cool. I oh, know it's this side. I don't know what side it is. I'm gone.